This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello, pet lovers. This is Michelle Fern, your host on Best Pets for Pets. And today we're talking about that ah cat litter, but not just any cat litter. This cat litter is special. And I have the founder of the company to tell us all about it. We're going to be right back after this message. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. I'd like to welcome Jackson Cunningham. He is the founder of Tuft and Paw, and they also make a cat litter called Really Great Cat Litter. (laughs) I love that name, Jackson. Did you actually develop Really Great Cat Litter? Yeah, we did. I mean, it's a category of cat litter that's existed, but it's our own formula. Okay. So, Tuft and Paw has a lot of really cool products, and we'll talk about those products a little bit at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. But why did you decide to make a cat litter? It's a very competitive category out there in the pet industry. And I know there's differences among them. And I know really great cat litter is very distinctive, but it's still a really competitive (laughs) category. What made you decide to develop um, really great cat litter, even though the overall category is just so competitive? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's something about the scale and scope of the issue that was really appealing. Just the fact that every single cat person needs to deal with cat litter. And so coming up with an innovative solution for it felt like it would impact so many people. And for me personally, I've gone through many different types of litter and never found one that I like in particular. Specifically, tracking has always been the most annoying part for me is just like having the cat litter tracked all around our apartment and needing to like vacuum all the time. And so it just felt frustrating that there wasn't a product out there that had really solved that until we came across this type of cat litter that that is now um, really great cat litter, which is basically soy tofu cat litter. Soy tofu? Yeah, it's um the category is tofu cat litter. And oh, I've just, never heard of that before. Yeah, so it's you know there's so many different types of cat litter. I've learned more about cat litter than <laughs> I ever thought I would know. But you know most people are familiar with clay cat litter, just the kind of standard. And then there's walnut, corn cat litter, paper cat litter, little crystals. Yeah, tons of the silica crystal, which has you know become really popular with the health monitoring recently. So there's so many different kinds. But for me, yeah, like the biggest issue is just the tracking and yeah, and and tofu cat litter, which is actually getting a ton of popularity recently. It's one of the newest kinds of cat litter. We just kind of came across it and I tried it at home with um, a version of it with my own cat. And it was just an instant game changer for us. Just the pellets being really light and kind of big. It's sort of, they work like pine pellets. If anybody's tried pine pellets, they track way less than the crystal litter. I actually, crystal litter was my least favorite just because I was crunching on it all around my apartment. But yeah, the pellets don't track and that's a huge thing. And then they're also dissolved, disintegrate completely in water. So they can be um, flushed down the toilet, which is really a huge thing for lots of people. I'm going to ask you about that in a minute, but let's talk about tracking. I was just dealing with that the other day. And you know what happens 
if you're at home and you don't want it in your office, you'll try to get it off your feet, you know, before it goes into your office. So, okay, I'll put it in the bathroom. Someone else, oh, will yeah. with it, right? Yeah. But it's, yeah. it sticks and it seems like it's so easy for the cats to kick that kind of litter out. Yeah. Of the litter box. Anyone who has cats knows it, how much of a pain the neck it is. Yeah. Huge, huge pain. Yeah. So there's some things you can do. I mean, like we basically eliminated tracking at my place just from using a litter box with higher sides. So that prevents some of the stuff from being kicked out. And then using the really great cat litter. It's like we we don't, you know, there's a couple, maybe a couple of pellets every couple of days that we clean up, but it's just completely different than using clay or crystal litter. I've tried the high sides. Doesn't work. Yeah. Didn't oh, work doesn't. mine. No. I, huh. mean, I have three cats. Yeah. Five boxes inside. Okay. Wow. And I know people have different schools of thought with automatic, but two of them are automatic because, hey, three cats and they poop like five. So, you know, right. So two are closed. One cat likes to hide in one of the litter boxes. I don't question it anymore, but I love that it's non-tracking and the different shape. It's kind of like little tiny cylinders. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Does that have something to do with how well it dissolves? And does it really, really dissolve for people that maybe have their own septic tanks? That's a big thing here in the U.S., especially in the Northeast. And for condos, you know, it's a great help for anyone in a condo. So you don't have to lug, you know, the litter box mess downstairs. It really absorbs. What makes it absorb so efficiently? Yeah. So, okay. So the first question on tracking, yeah, it's something to do with the shape and the weight of it, that it's harder for it to stick in your cat's paws. And so if you think about like the tiny crystals or the tiny cornflakes, like they're so light and they get a bit wet and they just stick to your cat's paw. These are like big enough that, you know, maybe one might get caught in between your cat's paw, but like they're just too big for them to really track. So that's kind of the main thing and why people don't, you know, why isn't all litter made in pellets? The main reason is because for most litters to be tracking, they need to be like in smaller shapes. But the way this, the way our litter works is basically when it gets wet, you can think of it like it melts, like it disintegrates kind of. And then once it dries, it hardens again. So it clumps, but it's soft. Like, how can I describe this? It's like you could squish a pellet in your fingers and it kind of turns into like a powder. So Basically, when the cat pees on it, it kind of mushes together and then it hardens. And then when it's put back in liquid, it then turns again into like a, yeah, it breaks down. So that's why it doesn't track is the shape and the size. Okay. Before you get on to um, how well it dissolves, does this mean that, because I tried it, but I haven't noticed this yet. Does this mean since it kind of mushes when it gets wet and it doesn't really, it's not really, doesn't have that stickiness. Does this mean it'll stick less to your cat if they have long hair and they're lazy? If they have long hair and they're lazy. Um, <laughs> and I can't speak to the laziness, but but the long hair, will it stick less to the cat with long hair? I mean, I'm not completely sure on that part. Like how, if their hair is getting it should i mean like the thing is it's just harder like the the larger size it's harder for it to stick than just thinking about like little pieces of sand essentially and not only is it it sticks less but also just cleanup is that much less because it's like you have a few pellets that you can just see versus being like oh it's all over my feet and it tracks everywhere once you get it outside the box it's everywhere yeah yeah and anecdotally i can just tell you that it's like i've converted so many of my friends to this product just like you live in an apartment it's it really does help okay let's talk about how well it dissolves see now yes i have another question if it's called tofu cat letter does that mean it's so much sustainable Absolutely. That's like one of the big features is it's basically, you know, there's a ton of production these days going into plant protein. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And so what happens is soy, so tofu, you know, is soybeans, and they throw away all the husks. So, you know, like just the shells, they throw it away, and it goes into landfills. And so there's a whole bunch of extra husks now. And what our cat litter is made from is those husks that are ground down into a powder. So it's reusing these items that would have gone to landfill and is significantly more sustainable than clay litter, which is bad. It's expensive and uh, creates lots of emissions because it's so heavy to ship. And once it's used, it ends up in landfills. So 
significantly more sustainable in every aspect in production and post-production. That's smart, especially with the plant, you know, plant, everything these days, everything to the point that's another show. I mean, I've eaten a lot, mostly plant-based for a long time. Now it's easier than any time because there's so many options available, you know, but 20, 30 years ago, Burger King did not have plant-based burgers. You know, you wouldn't have, well, you wouldn't have plant-based tofu, I'm mean, tofu cat litter either. But how, what a great idea that you're taking something that would just be tossed away and finding a use for it. Yeah. We're taking a quick break. Then I want to know how it dissolves so well. We'll be right back. For those fortunate to have experienced the deep bond and unconditional love of a companion animal, the death that follows can be one of the most difficult and misunderstood losses to go through. Many times, this devastating loss goes unrecognized and trivialized by family and friends, leaving grieving pet parents struggling to find healthy ways to cope with the loss. In And I Love You Still, a thoughtful guide and remembrance journal for healing the loss of a pet, Dr. Julianne Corbin calls attention to the difficulties unique to the loss of a beloved pet and provides an interactive and compassionate guide to help you process your loss and work towards coming to a place of peace and healing. For those interested in journal therapy and looking for a professionally written and compassionate resource to help understand and reconcile the grief associated with the loss of your pet, this book is for you. And I Love You Still, a thoughtful guide and remembrance journal by Julianne Corbin is now available for purchase on Amazon and other major book retailers. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everybody. We're talking with Jackson Cunningham. He's the founder of Tough and Paw, and we're talking about his really great cat litter, which is tofu cat litter. Doesn't mean it's edible, but it means it's better for your cat, the environment, it clumps easy. And now we're talking about how well it disintegrates. So, Jackson, what makes it disintegrate so well? And to give people who live in those areas that where they have their own septic tanks peace of mind, how will it not cause them problems with their septic tank? Yeah, so the way that it's made is basically a powder. So soybean husk powder that's, yeah, it's ground up into a powder that's soluble in water, but then it's pressed into a little pellet. And so when a little bit of water comes on it, like a cat peeing or a little bit of liquid, it kind of like breaks down a little bit and then dries into a clump. But then when it's left in water, it's soluble. So it breaks down in terms of septic tanks. So we have run some tests and this is tricky because you don't want to ever give any sort of blanket statements for this kind of thing, but we do we do say that it's safe for septic tanks, but it's always good to start with small amounts and being cautious before ramping it up. But it's like, you can watch it if you drop a a clump in the water and you leave it. So basically we recommend putting clumps, one or two clumps in at a time, no bigger than the size of a billiard ball and letting it sit in the water for a little bit. And then you can just see eventually it kind of like breaks down and you flush and it just, it just kind of turns into like a, it breaks down like, yeah, exactly. But, but you don't want to take, you don't want to dump half of the litter box in the toilet and try flushing it. So you just have to use your judgment, but yeah, we say it is safe for septic and we're in the process of getting some like actual third party tests to show that evidence and yeah, just starting cautiously. The other thing I want to jump ahead of is there is some concern, some valid concern that folks have about flushing cat feces down the toilet from um, toxoplasmosis. Are you familiar with that? I'm sure I've probably had it on the show before. But yeah. Probably to- toxicities inside their feces. Exactly. And it's there's some concern that it can get into the water supply or um, harm wildlife. And so... The main issue with that is that toxoplasmosis is transferred to cats in some cases when 
typically when they eat an infected rodent or bird. So it's extremely rare for it to happen with indoor cats. And so that's another kind of disclaimer that we usually recommend is like, this is mainly meant for indoor cats. And it's again, for each person to use their own judgment, check with their municipality and be responsible, essentially. Right. And also, and because I know you were giving caveats just in, you know, with septic tank, whatever. I mean, some people have really, really old septic tanks. Exactly. And, and anything can alter or change it or cause. Exactly. A problem, you know, exactly. So you, you can't have a blanket statement. But on the other hand, if you're dropping one or two clumps, you see it disintegrating so that there's just no more, you know, litter there. There's just powder and, you know, the poop ball, then, you know, it's just poop there. So flush, you're done. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like we have kind of some best practices and then it's kind of like each person has to has to figure out their own what they want to do. Exactly. Okay, let's talk about the cats. Do cats like the feel of it better? I tested it with my cats. Two of them always use the litter box. One has issues. So, but she did use it a little bit more with the um, really great cat litter than she did with other cat litter. So I'm hopeful. Do cats like the feel of it better because it's like, like you said, flat pellets versus. Yeah. Okay. Tell us about that. You keep saying yes, yes. So tell me what happened when you. Tried it out. <laughs> so. So this, I'm just saying, um, yes, I understand. Um, so as you know, you have different cats, all cats kind of have their own preference. The pellets are soft, so they're soft. You can squish them with your fingers. And this is just kind of a cat preference thing. There's going to be some cats who, especially if they're used to a different kind of litter that may prefer the old litter. And then there's cats who we just hear about different experiences. So you really have to try it with your with your cat. I don't think it would be cats not liking the feel. It might just be that cats are habitual creatures. And so if they're used to using a different litter, some cats are more stubborn than others, but it's definitely a soft product and is is um, safe and comfortable on cat's paws. But that's each cat it, is different. That's where I was going. I think it's softer. So I think it's more comfortable for them. I mean... Unless they ha have, you know, a secret happiness to get back at their two-legged owners there and, and right. look out their old cat litter, so you have to step on these little tiny crunchy bits. I think it would be more comfortable for them as well. Yeah, I mean, we just tried to make a good product all around. So it's like easier for humans because it tracks less. It's It can be flushed. It has really great odor control. It's lightweight. But then also we're super concerned about cats. We want it to make sure that it's healthy. There's a lot of really dangerous issues with other litters, especially clumping ones that if a cat ingests it can cause some serious health issues. So that's always our number one is like making sure that it's safe and healthy for cats. But as we know, cats are very, can be very picky. So we try to combat that with just a really generous policy. Like if anybody orders our cat litter and they're not 100% satisfied, they can email me directly and we'll issue a full refund. Can't beat that. What yeah. is the best way to transition from, you know, the old litter to the really great cat litter? I have a feeling it's going to be similar to how you transition them to food. So what do you advise? Yeah. So I, you know, we deal with a lot of this because it's people who are trying to fix the human issues. Their cat doesn't necessarily have a problem with the litter, but the human's trying to change it. So there's less tracking. Um, and so typically you want to, over a period of 30 days, just slowly shift the balance of old litter to new litter. So you do not want to switch it all at once to the new stuff. You kind of want to keep, you know, 70% of the old stuff and 30% of the new stuff and then go 50, 50 after a week and then go 70, 30 the other way. And then finally 100% on the new stuff with, you know, some of their, you basically want to make sure they're used to the new smell. And then you want to make sure you don't change any other variables. So you don't want to move the litter box to a new place. You don't want to have any associations with the new litter that's different. So you don't want to do it if you're introducing a new cat to the home at the same time or switching the litter box moving homes, like you want to keep everything consistent, and then just slowly switch the balance to the new litter. Yes, because cats are nothing if not consistent. They like exactly how they are. You move something even a little bit out of the way and they do not like that at all. 
No, they're very fussy. Yeah, they will let you know. Tuft and Pot makes a lot of other products and some really gorgeous litter boxes. Can you tell us a little bit about your other products? Yes. So we make a lot of different modern, beautiful furniture. We just wanted to have products that people would be really proud to have in their home. And so we have a small team, but most people on our team are part of the product design team. We make lots of cat trees, litter boxes, cat perches, scratching posts. Two of our most popular products, we have the Cove litter box, which is just a kind of sleek, modern litter box with high sides with like an integrated scoop. And it's won multiple design awards. It's just like very sleek and attractive litter box. And then we have the Cloud 9, which is a window cat hammock. And it's just like a beautiful thing you can put on your window at home that creates a really awesome silhouette and cats love perching on it from above. And finally, so that product has become a bestseller. We actually sold out in the first week that we launched it and we're restocking in September. And then our next product that's coming up, a sneak peek for your listeners, is a cat carrier. So we're making like a really sleek cat carrier at a very reasonable price point that we're super excited about that's going to launch probably the end of this year. So tell me about the cat carrier. Is it, you know, like a backpack somebody wears? Yeah, so it's not a backpack. It's um, the main thing we wanted to hit a price. So cat carriers right now, there's like, you know, the really cheap ones that you can get that are just like, you know, the gray plastic ones or like a sort of duffel bag for 40 bucks or 50 bucks. And then there's these like really high end ones, or there's the backpacks, as you mentioned that you can get, or there's these really high end ones that are like 300 bucks. And so we're kind of like looking at a bag that you could, it's like a type of bag that would feel not fancy or anything like that, but would feel nice, like kind of modern and stylish. And, you know, you might take to the airport with you, or you'd take it around to the office and feel like it's a nice bag. So that's kind of like the look and we wanted it at a price point that's around $100. And just as like a beautiful piece of luggage or like a beautiful bag. And it has all the features that we would love in a bag, which is like it opens really big on the top, it actually opens almost like so it's much easier to get your cat inside, you're not trying to get your cat in a small opening, you can kind of just drop them in this really wide open top. And then it just looks really sleek, like it has lots of netting so you can see your cat Um, it has a really firm structure so it's safe for your cat Uh, it has like a little sort of leash attachment and it opens up into a bed so you can take it with you and open it into a bed for your cat it's it's pretty cool sounds pretty cool we're almost out of time let's talk just wrap it up with a little bit more about your really great cat litter how can they people buy it yeah so if they visit tuftandpaw.com they'll see it it's like our main product it's right up at the top Um, They'll see really great cat litter with links to it. Or if they just Google really great cat litter, they'll find it all over the internet. Okay. And it's by subscription monthly. Yeah. So it's, it's monthly subscription, but you can cancel anytime. And like I said, it's a hundred percent money back guarantee. If you don't like it after the first month, we also offer a quarterly subscription, which gives you 10% off each bag. So Jackson, thank you so much for coming on Best Bets for Pets and telling us all about really great cat litter at Tuft and Paw. So um, I wish you great success. Thank you so much for coming on Best Bets for Pets. Thank you so much for having me. I would, um, this was a great show. And, you know, we've had a lot of cat litters on Best Bets for Pets. And I have to say, this was really one of my favorites because one of my peeves, and this happened to me all week before I switched over to the really great cat litter, the little pieces of gravel everywhere with the standard cat litter is such Ooh, such a challenge. And I want to thank my cat crew that adapted well to the really great cat litter. And that's uh, Charlotte and Dennis and Molly. Sammy and Jethro, they are my outdoor kitties because they're from the cat community. They're they're semi-feral. So they use the ground as litter. Sorry, but that's, you know, that's how they roll. So... I want to thank my kitties for doing a great job while we transition to really great cat litter. 
Thanks to my producer, Mark Winter, for making me and my guests sound amazing. Thank you to Jackson Cunningham from Tuft and Paw for coming on Best Bets for Pets. Thanks to Nikki the dog for not eating any cat litter. And thanks to everyone listening to Best Bets for Pets. I appreciate you so much. Now keep listening because you never know what we're going to have next on Best Bets for Pets. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.